If you had to learn calligraphy, what you would do is you would sit there and you would copy the same patterns over and over and over again until you developed enough of a skill set to where you could actually do that for yourself. Imam al-Ghazai rahimahullah said that's the way that the process of teskia works, the process of spirituality works. You look to the pious predecessors that came before you. You don't get wowed away by their stories, but instead you try to see your story in their story. But before you can do that and start to write your own spiritual journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within the parameters of the tradition of the Prophet, peace be upon him, you have to look to those stories and see how they dealt with their spiritual diseases, how they overcame them, how they overcame fatigue, how they developed good habits, and then see how your personality type matches up with theirs and then develop the exact same thing. So what we do in behind the scenes is that we actually measure every bad quality against their stories, every good quality against their stories. We look at the way the pious predecessors did so, so what their best practices were, so we can develop our own practices in accordance with the sunnah to further build our own spiritual identity. And you can't build your spiritual identity until you have strong spiritual awareness. So the class starts off with building up spiritual awareness. And then the second part of class is how you actually start to construct your spiritual identity with full intentionality, with full awareness, and with the full intention of being what the Prophet ﷺ said that you were capable of being. Look, the idea is that if you, you want to build yourself up physically, then you have routines in place. You learn about your particular body type and you deal with it in that way. You, you have a specific plan customized to fit you because of your own physical habits, your lifestyle, your body habits. The same thing is true for the soul. And the soul is more important of being catered to and having a customized plan as to how to grow your soul because that's what's going to persist and that's what, what's going to continue after this world and eventually meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you don't deal with your soul with the same level of intentionality and customization as you do your body, then just like with a sporadic diet and with a bad workout plan, you're never really going to get anywhere. You're just going to have temporary short victories, but you're never actually going to have healthy habits. So this is really about developing spiritually healthy habits so that your spirituality is not sporadic because you can't afford for it to be sporadic because death doesn't wait for you to be at your spiritual peak. Look, the whole concept of salvation in Islam is based on the idea that you try your best, but then you depend on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can you really tell Allah that you've tried your best if you haven't learned best practices as to how to properly train your soul in a way that makes it pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So that's the whole point of salvation in Islam, that we're doing our best to present ourselves to a Lord that we know is more merciful than our mothers are to us and a Lord that will overlook our shortcomings so long as we were doing our best to overcome those shortcomings. The worst case scenario is that in your heedlessness you develop satanic habits. Uh, Satan who is shaitan who is looked at as the example of what not to be is someone who became uh, heedless of the diseases within him particularly the disease of pride until it overcame him and made him who he became. So being heedless of yourself allows for so many diseases to develop the same way that if you're not taking care of yourself physically and if you're not paying attention, then who knows what you've developed as far as physical disorder or physical disease. So there are uh, barometers of success and indicators of failure and an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. The solution is knowledge of self coupled with training of self. So the same way that you deal with your body, you deal with your soul. Knowledge of body coupled with training of body. So think about the spiritual poisons as the things that you spiritually consume, all right? What you eat is important as well as how you work out, how you physically exercise. Spiritually, what you consume as far as the muhrikat, the destructive laws, the poisons is important to make sure that you're consuming the right things. And then how you're training yourself spiritually is the same way that you train yourself physically through routines through following the best practices of the prophet peace be upon him and his companions you can develop those good habits to then make sure that you're uncomfortable with bad consumption so this study follows for the most part the track of imam ibn qudama rahimahullah ta'ala who summarized a summary of uh ulum al-Din by imam al-ghazali which has really been looked at as the the the, the encyclopedia if you will on uh on spirituality right but Ibn Qudama rahimahullah summarized the summary by Ibn al-Jawzi uh, rahimahullah, which focuses on what's most authentic, what's most practical, what's most compliant, and then what's most applicable. You know, there are many great 
lectures that are out there. There are many great uh, books that are out there, but they're all over the place. And it's not because the author did a bad job. It's because the reader is not learning in a structured way. So the point of this course is to give you an introduction to how to start learning spirituality in a structured way, because there is a structure for it that's prescribed in the Sunnah of the Prophet So that's that's the way that we approach the subject. So the person who really inspired me uh, to teach this course was Sheikh Hatim al-Hajj, Dr. Hatim al-Hajj, who actually uh, did a full explanation of Mukhtasar al Hajj al-Qasidi in the book by Ibn Qudam, rahimahullah ta'ala. And the reason being is that Sheikh Hatim taught all of his students really that there is a way to teach spirituality in a way that that coincides with the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu is structured and can really cause you to start thinking twice about everything that you do in a, in a way that's uh, that's beneficial the prophet sallallahu warned us of heedlessness so at the very least if when you're doing something wrong you have a recognition that you're doing something wrong that's an accomplishment because that's when you can start to right that wrong so I think that typically when the when the topic of Tuskia comes up, people think, uh, you know, oh, this is some roomy type poetry. This is some like, you know, crazy, crazy out there stuff. It doesn't really uh, match with the Sunnah of the Prophet's life. Well, well, no, actually, there are ways that we can really develop our spirituality in a structured way while staying true to those spiritual practices and to the Sunnah of the Prophet's life which is something that I thought that Sheikh Hatim did very well, and that's where I really got the inspiration to teach this course. For me, the greatest indicator of the success of this course is that I meet students a year or two later that come up to me and that actually tell me that they made a change, a practical change in their lives. Typically, one of the greatest frustrations in spirituality is that you feel like you got somewhere, and then it suddenly takes a really drastic turn away from that point. So you had your spiritual high in Ramadan, you had your spiritual high if you went to Umar or Hajj or whatever it may be, but then it, it suddenly disappeared or it seemingly suddenly disappeared. So for me, the greatest element of success from behind the scenes is that I still meet students that took it five, six years ago that are still talking about it, that still benefited from behind the scenes, alhamdulillah. So to me, that is the greatest success of it, that it gives people an opportunity to actually have the tools to continue to reboot and to restructure and to uh, recalibrate in their journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that they don't need another class. They don't need another uh, halaqa to get that spiritual boost. They've got the roadmap that's sort of set out for them. And that's when you can start actually um, diagnosing yourself on some of these things and then, um, you know, implementing some practical tips. That to me is what spirituality is meant to be. What you get from behind the scenes is a complete overview of how spirituality works from the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ in a structured way. So what we do with the course is we start off with illustrating basic concepts in Islam that you hear a lot of times that have very ambiguous meanings and giving them very defined meanings. And then we start to talk about consumption from the, uh, from the, the standpoint of destructive flaws. And so we go through what those destructive flaws are and what the root causes of those destructive flaws are. So I want you to look deeper than basically just that backbiting is haram and I need to stop it and this is why backbiting is so bad. Or pride is such a bad thing. Well, what makes a person develop pride? What are some of the early signs that a person is going into pride or going into a particular disease of the tongue or a disease of the heart? And then what are the practices to uproot the bad qualities, to break the habit of sin or a sinful quality and then replace them with a new purpose, but not just a new purpose, but new practices, good practices, good habits, so that those things don't creep up on me once again. So behind the scenes takes you through that that logical progression from uh, basic concepts to spiritual awareness to consumption to good practice, best practices to, to keep those things out, and then kind of gives you the tools on how you can readjust when you need to readjust uh, without everything, you know, suddenly collapsing and saying, well, this experiment didn't work. This spiritual high, just like every other spiritual high in my life collapsed. A lot of times people postpone their, uh, they sort of put this mark that when this happens, then I'm going to be a better Muslim, that I'm going to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm going to change my life for the better. But there's the assumption that there's going to be a chance for me to come later on 
and to really change things. So your spiritual health is more important than your physical health. Your connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more important than any other relationship that you have in life. Your success in the understanding of the way that the akhirah works, the hereafter works, is the most important form of success. It's important for people never to delay their tawbah, never to delay their repentance. And repentance is not simply, um, you know, saying astaghfirullah, seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's actually making changes uh, to where you're turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're actually intentionally turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with everything that you have and doing everything the way that he wants you to do it. So go ahead and sign up and I hope that you're able to find exactly what you're looking for in this course and I hope that you're able to really begin that journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and start to customize your own plan uh, of spirituality.